If you've clicked on this video, you have the chance to speed up the trading journey by up to a year in just 20 minutes. I've been trading for one year and four months now, and I've managed to become profitable since my eighth month into trading. However, since the beginning, I had a completely different mindset to anything that I see on the YouTube space. So in this video, I'm going to be covering my journey and all the very important lessons and specifics along the way, which allowed me to progress at the rate that I did. So this is not just going to be the average trading video you normally watch. It's going to be 20 minutes straight of me talking. Most people can't sit through 20 minutes straight because their dopamine levels are too messed up. Already, that's just not even going to make it possible for you to be a profitable trader. So if you truly want to make it, make a promise to yourself now that you'll watch this video all the way through. The value is going to be in the information provided. Let's get straight into it. So for the first point in this video, how did I manage to succeed so quickly? Well, my goal was completely not to succeed quickly in trading. Pretty much the opposite mindset to what everyone has. Now, even if everyone tells themselves, okay, I'm fine with it taking two, three years, subconsciously, they're actually not okay with it and they want it to happen much quicker. Now, giving yourself a timeline in trading is one of the worst things you can do because you end up forcing things to happen within a certain amount of time that they're not supposed to. Of course, if it starts getting close to that deadline, you're going to be trading more frantically and just have emotions that shouldn't be there affecting your trades. So the number one rule is don't give yourself a timeline. I didn't have any sort of idea of when I wanted to become profitable. All I know was that on the first day of learning trading, I actually watched a video from the trading geek. As we know now, he's not actually a real trader. He got exposed to that a long time ago. But that's what I remember watching when I first started, right? For the first two, three months, I was following the same pretty much bad influences that most people follow in trading. And he actually said in that video, trading will take two to three years to become profitable. Now, when I heard this, first thing I thought was, wow, two to three years. I'm gonna purposely make sure I find out what everyone normally does and do the opposite and make sure I don't get caught up with the same things everyone's thinking. Now, that's how I thought from the first day of actually watching trading on YouTube, right? You can imagine how powerful this was in the long term and how it was very helpful for me to succeed because that's the mindset I got into trading with. I wasn't just blindly following everything. If people were saying stuff here and there, I was actually thinking about whether it was true or not, finding out whether it was true. And this led me to find good influences in the space very quickly. But the first factor that actually helped me, it also was a massive negative at the same time. And that was that I started live trading from the first day I ever watched a video on Forex. Now, this was a good thing and a bad thing. It allowed me to progress very quickly, but only because I was lucky enough to find out the right information and have the right intentions into what I was doing. If not, this would have been an extreme negative. So I was initially starting out trading the one minute chart. I was just randomly placing positions based off high highs and lower lows. That's the only thing I'd learned at the time. This caused me to develop extremely bad psychological habits because I was not ready to be trading live capital. I was trading about a 5K live account, which I lost all of. And so this allowed me two things. One, I gained experience extremely quickly and understood what psychology actually was and how it was important. Two, I developed so many bad habits from doing this. I had a very bad trading addiction and I just couldn't stop placing positions every day I get to the charts, place random positions. I couldn't trade an edge at all. So while that's a bad thing, I found out very quickly there was a bad thing, and so I had the intention to overcome it. This was a good thing because I am now in a position where I have live market experience, which is one of the most important things, but I also knew about the psychology I was doing that was bad, and where I had to get to in order to be profitable. So with this in mind, the next six months playing out was all working on this. Now it took me about three months to get over the over leveraging and over trading addiction that I was in and to actually start trading properly with one trade per day and following an edge. When this happened and I actually did this for about a month straight, this is when I realized that I didn't have an edge. There was no way of me ever knowing before because I was just placing random trades every day and I was over leveraging. After I tried to trade with an edge, I was placing one trade per day max, I was trading the five minute charts, and I was trading normal supply and demand. Now during this period, I had no success with trading, my equity curve stayed around break even, my max risk to reward was 1 to 1, 1 to 2, and pretty much I just go for about 2 weeks straight, trading properly, wouldn't really get anywhere, and eventually I just get frustrated and the account would fall off. So this is when I realised I needed a proper strategy, an actual good strategy with an edge. And this is when I started backtesting in extreme detail on how I actually came to finding liquidity supply and demand. So that's sort of the journey that I took. Now when I first found it, it was in a very basic state. It wasn't very good and it didn't have the edge it has now. That's another thing. The bonus of trading the same strategy for a long time, you'll only get better at it and you'll increase the strategy's edge. 
just a side point right there don't strategy hold right it's one of the worst things you can do but anyways that's how i ended up finding out my strategy and i had overcome all the psychological problems i started out with and i knew i had them from about the second month in trading here i was in a position where i had all these factors coming together now after this i tried to trade my actual edge liquidity supply and demand and for about a month i still didn't have the edge i still wasn't trading properly and realized that that's because I couldn't hold trades to TP. I was always closing them early, which is something I would never do in backtesting. So then I set out on the mission. How can I transfer my backtesting results into the live markets? So since that point, I was always testing. Whenever I backtested, I was thinking, how would this be playing out in the live markets? How would I enter this in real life? And what would I be thinking? Then instead of just putting on the stop loss tool and playing out the trade in under a second, I was watching it in detail and thinking, in the live markets when this was playing out, what would I be thinking? And I realized that there were so many times where I closed the position because of what I was seeing and the reasons I was creating in my head. This is where I found out about the mental bias, everything that goes into trading. If you sit there looking at it the whole time, you're gonna come up with reasons, obviously to close, and just gonna come up with a bunch of negative reasons, right? So of course don't do that. I was second overanalyzing, not trusting my first analysis. So I realized this is something I have to overcome. That's when I started every single trade I enter, I would always hold stop loss or TP no matter what happened. And I did this for a long time and that was extremely helpful because when this happened I started getting good results. Trades that looked terrible that were about to lose would just hit TP. In backtesting, those would have hit TP because I never closed in backtesting. That's how I realized to not close the trade based on anything that's happening after the initial analysis, at least with the zone based strategy which is what ours is. So from this phase, I started trading with an edge and it took me about one to two months to actually get decent results from being profitable. So even though I was profitable two months, I didn't even know or consider myself profitable until about four months into the trading journey. This is something that will happen because profitability, it just comes with time as a byproduct of your discipline. It's not something that you decide to have and then you get payouts and then you know you're profitable. It just comes slowly over time. Eventually, you'll just have been trading an edge for a long enough time and it would have just happened without you even realizing. So the only thing you should focus on, and this is what I started focusing on from very early, is only the trading day that you're currently trading. Not in the future, not how I'm gonna get funded or get these payouts, only focus on the trade I'm currently taking, one trade at a time. This mindset was very powerful for me because that is what led me to those first two months of profitable trading, where I didn't even know yet that I was actually profitable. I thought maybe it was luck and Looking back since then, it wasn't luck. It's never stopped, I'm a profitable trader. That's just how it happens. There's not really a defining moment. It happens slowly. Trading, I always say it's like an onion. You peel back a layer, you find something out. There's always so many more underneath. It's an endless game. Where you have to be profitable is not at the bottom of this onion once you've peeled back every layer. Where you get profitable, let's say, is in the middle of the onion. You don't need everything to be a profitable trader. You don't need all the small tweaks all these tiny little hacks, all this complicated stuff in the markets. It just has to be simple. You have to be following a good edge. When you uncover about half of these points, let's say, halfway through the onion, you're profitable. The rest is just finding your edge and fine tuning to increase your profits in the long term or increase your security. And so just focusing on one trade per day is very important on stream trades. It allows you to do that, understand your edge, let an edge play out, see where you're actually going wrong, you have to be journaling this. You can actually see a good visual representation of it and understand how each decision you make has an effect on your equity curve. I was doing this, like I mentioned, from a very early stage in my trading career. And so this is how everything sort of played out. I didn't have the social media mindset. I'd heard what the professional side of training was and what it should look like. That is, of course, how I now know. You have to be a capital manager. You're not a Forex trader on YouTube doing all these one minute entries, sniper entries, all this stupid stuff, right? You are a equity manager. I always like to say that. You own a business in a sense. You have to be sustainable, conservative. This is how, of course, you'll unlock all the three different levels of capital, funded capital, personal capital, and investor capital, right? You have to be in that type of mindset, have a good track record, all those things to, of course, get an investor in the first place. So that's how you should think of trading. The truth is that, unfortunately, I'd say even 95%, it's a very high number of the traders on YouTube are not actually profitable. It's a sad state for the industry to be in, but that's how it is at the moment. And of course, it makes sense why so many traders are lost in such high fare rate because they're not actually even trading. They're just doing random things, just something else that has been made up as trading and put on the face of YouTube because it sounds nice. The number one tip I can give about trading 
is not caring about it. It's that simple. Not caring about trading will make you good at it in the sense that all you care about is just analyzing the charts properly, placing your trades. If you have any, waiting for the setup and placing the trade, that's it. Just leave. It's so simple. I switched from the five minute a few months ago in or about four or five months ago now. And that was part of the reason for it. I was at the charts for too long. I was caring about it too much on the five minute. And also it wasn't professional or sustainable. So that's why I switched to 30 minute. And since then, I've never looked back. It's been so much better in the sense that I can follow those steps. I can just place a trade, let it play out. Whatever happens, happens. All I have to do or all my job is, is to trade the edge and enter the positions when I should. Move stop loss to break even when I should. That's it. It's so simple. And when you start overcomplicating it, staying at the charts for hours and hours, that's when you start getting bad habits creep in, bad psychology creeps in because you've been sitting there for so long. All these things are just a detriment to traders and they're not talked about how they should be. If they were, there'd be a much higher success rate. And it really was just when I took a step back, did the step earlier, like I mentioned, of just letting every single trade either hit TP or stop loss and not touching it. That's almost a form of not caring because no matter how it looked, I just let it play out. Now, of course, once you get more advanced, there'll be actual times where you should close the trade or manage it in some type of way. In the beginning, though, I truly believe you should just not touch it at all because this will give you the mentality that you need to become profitable. So not caring about trading, one of the most powerful things that actually allows you to become successful at trading. Most people I see, they have such bad trading addiction. They're constantly trying to find trades in the market, force trades, take trades. And if they're not doing that, they don't feel like they're trading. When the reality is being a trader, I'm hardly even at the screen. Being a trader, I'm just living and doing stuff. Actually analyzing the charts is probably like one to 2% of my day, placing trade 1%, that's it. That's the reality of being a trader. It's not even that interesting once you get there. In the beginning, I understand the passion, right? I went through a phase where I was backtesting throughout the entire day. I've been through since like 2005 in the markets on all pairs I trade. That stage was necessary to have such a good understanding. But once you've done that, you have to break out the trading addiction and understand that there's a very high chance you have it because trading is psychologically addicting. It can be the same as gambling and you have to be a very self-aware person and very real with yourself to actually realize that in the first place. So my final point in this video is about undercapitalization. One reason I became profitable so quickly is because I realized and understood that I was undercapitalized and that was gonna make me trade different. I had to trade if I wanted to ever become profitable as if I was trading large amounts of capital while making 10 pounds on a position. I had to pretend that was 1,000, otherwise I wouldn't trade properly. Being undercapitalized leads you to making so many stupid decisions. You might take a trade and it hits TP, but your TP was only for $15. And so you randomly extend it because you don't care about $15. Well, guess what? Now you're not trading the edge and you're not trading how you should be. So it's just gonna take you longer to actually get where you want to be. Even though you might think you're making more money, that's just a short-term fix. A short-term fix will create long-term problems. So the way I did it was just pretending that every single trade I was taking, Everything I was doing was on a 100k account. Eventually I changed this to 500k just to actually understand the power. I'd hit a one to three, and if I wasn't satisfied with it, essentially, okay, I should be up 3,000 now. Think about how powerful that is. Being undercapitalized causes you to think a 5% month is a bad month. 5% month is an extremely good month. On just 100k, that's 5,000. Most prop firms have 400 to 600k challenges. That's about 20,000. So if you guys think you always have unrealistic expectations from being undercapitalized, right? They feel like if they take only two trades per month and they're up 4%, that's bad. I understood this from about five months into my trading journey. When I started trading like this is when I actually got close and started to reach these levels of capital. You can go on my Instagram. You guys will see the first time I got funded 100K. When that happened, I pretty much lost my edge. I lost my psychological edge because I couldn't handle it. And so this, of course, made me realize more about psychology. A lot of the problems, all it takes is experience to actually understand that you have a problem. And I didn't know. I thought my psychology was fine, trading on a 100K challenge, and then it got to live account and I couldn't handle it. So I had to scale back. I did get a lucky payout from that account, even though I was extremely nervous. I took a payout and then I lost the account. So. I understood that I had to scale back. Most people would get caught in a loop there. This is why you have to be extremely self-aware as a trader. Most people get caught in a loop. Now they're only going for 100K accounts because that's what they're worth now. And they're just gonna get caught in that forever. 
I scaled back and I dropped down to 10k accounts and I built my way up slowly. That's almost an opposite view of what everyone has in the trading industry. Think about it. Some people can have never even traded 2k live account and they're trying to take 100k challenges just thinking they'll be fine. They don't understand the psychology of money. I was lucky enough to understand the psychology of money because from about three years, I just happened to be making money online off of SoundCloud, one to two K a month. This made me understand that I had very bad psychology in terms of spending money and I just couldn't keep it, right? I had it at a young age with no financial literacy. Every time it would come into my account at the start of the month, by the end it would be gone. Every single month would repeat for about two years. So I had to learn the hard way, of course, of how to actually deal with that, which was good because it gave me experience. But most people think they're just gonna get on 100K account and start trading normally, but of course you're not, you're not gonna be able to handle it. So start small, work your way up sustainably. So yeah, going back to the point of being undercapitalized, right? It causes you to have unrealistic expectations when a 5% to 10% month would be extremely good. Imagine you're funded 500K, suddenly it's not good enough for you. You need to be trading the five minute, taking a trade every single day, right? These are the things being undercapitalized causes. You need to be in the mindset that you have lots of money, you're trading lots of money to even reach it in the first place. It's almost a form of manifestation. Your brain just becomes okay with it. It's like you're used to it already, even though you don't have it. And that's what you need to do in order to make it. So the last point was that I pretty much gave up everything for trading and I don't actually recommend doing this but it's very important to have a balance in life I understand that now however at the time I was so into trading that's all I did I gave up my entire social life pretty much everything and I was just inside studying trading all day for those six months straight non-stop now this was something that allowed me to have a very deep understanding of technicals and to actually become self-aware very good with psychology. It's very important. Meditation is very important for a trader. Journaling is very important because it's all forms of self-reflection and self-awareness. Without it, you can never catch yourself doing stuff in the moment, only after it's happened. So you'll over leverage or over trade. You know that's a bad thing, you still do it anyway. After it happens, okay, that was bad. What was I even doing? To be able to catch yourself in the moment, you need that self-awareness, which is why meditation is so powerful for trading. They go hand in hand and journaling as well because it's self-review and you'll constantly be aware of the decisions you're making and the emotions you're feeling as long as you track them down in a journal. So me doing this, of course, it allowed me to progress quickly. Now, my stance on this is that, of course, it's not a good thing to do this for too long, right? I maybe did it for too long and I went too far with that, but that's fine, okay? It's worked out in the end. My point is, is that I feel like everyone needs these periods, obviously just to show and trust themselves that they're actually real. How much do they want to be a profitable trader? How badly do they want it? Now, this is sort of opposite, I suppose, to not caring about trading, but everyone needs these periods where they're just 100% locked in, they're only focusing on their goals, and that will just allow you to improve at such a rapid pace in all areas of life. I'd say three to four months, maybe. Everyone should experience this just to understand if you can do three, four months, then you'll know that you're actually worthy of success because three to four months just being fully locked in, not doing anything else, it might not be the healthiest approach, but in my opinion, I feel like everyone needs to go through it at least once. Of course now, having a balance is definitely the best and I recommend not doing that too much. Maybe you just choose three months of a year where you are fully locked in and you don't do anything else. As long as you can handle it and it's not just going to destroy anything in your life, of course. Don't be too extreme or do anything stupid, but as long as you can handle it, I definitely recommend it. The pace that I improved at during that period, it was ridiculous. Such rapid advancement. It was about six months straight of just being purely locked in and I didn't do anything else. Of course, this is not sustainable in the long term. Don't do this any longer. You need social life. Right? You need all this type of stuff. But if you truly want it, you'll be able to do that for three to four months and you'll progress at an extreme rate. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Of course, that's not everything that helped me. There's a few more points here and there. Perhaps I'll go through them in future videos. I've already been through them in Discord webinars, etc. If you guys are interested in joining, I go through a lot of information that's not on the YouTube channel in there. And I've been getting amazing feedback about the webinars recently. I also put all my trades in there, trade breakdowns, daily forecasts, all the type of stuff. So if you're interested, I'll have that link pop up on screen or it's in the description. Also, one-to-one -one mentorships, I completely revamped the program to actually take some of you guys from being unprofitable traders all the way to being profitable within the mentorship. Now, these are one-on-one -on -one courses. I'll have them specifically designed for you based on the things that you're currently struggling with. And the top package has been designed so that you do eight weeks on, that you go off for four weeks by yourself, and you'll pretty much try and implement everything. Within these four weeks, you'll have a lot of self-development and you'll find out a lot more things. Then you'll come back after those four weeks 
and finish the rest of the mentorship with the knowledge that you've gained from being off on your own for four weeks. So it's been designed very specifically to help you guys, even the small package is the same, but that's gonna be it for this video. Check that out, link in the description as well if you're interested and I'll see you guys in the next one.